Joining me right now is the former chief of staff to Vice President Pence and Coalition to Protect American Workers Executive Director Mark Short. Mark, how do you see this? Hey, Maria, thanks for having me on. I certainly agree with Senator Rubio. I think in a free economy, the dispute should be determined between the employer and employees, and it's not really the role of the federal government. You know, in the 1920s, Congress passed a, a Labor Relations Act for railways. And, um, and, you know, there was a time in our country when, when they had a more predominant part of our freight that was transported across our country. But I kind of feel like, you know, if the Biden administration was trying to be constructive and knowing that a potential strike was coming that would clearly be disruptive to our economy, they should focus on the 60 percent of freight that comes in through ports and through trucks because their policies are raising costs across the board. For instance, Maria, their inexcusable energy policy has created diesel fuel at its all-time high. They could actually be focused on lowering that so transportation costs would come down. They could look to repeal the Jones Act that makes shipping costs more expensive. But instead, what you've seen is Democrat Party actually side with labor union bosses against labor union employees. And you continue to see that labor union employees continue to move toward the Republican Party. And it's because of issues like this, where the Democrat Union, the Democrat Party comes down and sides with the union bosses in a situation that really should be determined, should be settled between the employees and the employer, not by the federal government and not by Congress. Yeah, I think you make a lot of really important points there. And, you know, this from the guy who claims he's Amtrak Joe, that he's a union guy and he supports the unions. <laughs> he did not support the unions at all. And uh, that was clear yesterday when I spoke with the Brotherhood of Railroad uh, Signalmen, uh, President Michael Baldwin. He was with me yesterday and said they're denying our opportunity to strike. It's wrong. Congress should get out of the way. Watch. It creates a... Uh, uh a political, uh, not dissension, but but people uh, don't trust the system. Uh, they feel like their their right to uh, to strike, or more so, their right to uh, to be able to have the ability to have uh, leverage at the bargaining table. Mark, what do you think this is going to do to other unions? I mean, you know, one one thought that I've been having is the fact that they got a 24 percent raise will actually spark other unions to say, well. We're going to threaten a strike. We want a double-digit raise. We also want the benefits that they got. Although we should point out they didn't get the 15 sick days that they wanted. They didn't even get the seven that Nancy Pelosi put in the House bill. But do you see any unintended consequences here in terms of other unions as a result of congressional moves? Absolutely, Marie. I think there are always unintended consequences when yeah. the federal government gets involved. And I think you're exactly right. You're going to see that lesson learned from other labor unions. And again, I feel like that should be negotiated, uh, as your last guest said, between employer and employee and not by the federal government. I think it creates all sorts of unintended consequences. And if the Biden administration was really sincere about wanting to make sure that we were insulated from this, they would be looking to lower transportation cross costs across the board. But instead, they're just coming down and siding with labor union bosses. And I think what you saw in the 2016 election with Donald Trump is that actually labor union employees began to move toward the Republican Party. And I think that that trend is just going to continue with this action by the Biden administration. Yeah. And, and, and it's also so indicative of just how fragile this economy is as a result of Biden's bad policies, yeah. all that reckless spending, because if they weren't so worried about the impact on the economy, uh, maybe they would have allowed more negotiations to continue, giving the unions their rights that they have uh, to strike. Um, meanwhile, the Supreme Court is now going to hear arguments in a case challenging Biden's uh, student loan bailout. That happens in February, and until then, the high court upholding a lower court's ruling to block the $400 billion handout, a handout that some people say could cost up to $1 trillion. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain tweeted this, I believe we can win. Mark, your thoughts. Maria, I feel like uh, it's hard to see how it's legal for an administration to just wipe away student loan debt uh, without it being legislated through Congress. And so it, it seems they've always known their, their legal uh, liability here, but they thought it would be politically beneficial to simply say, I'm just going to erase this debt. And I think it, it certainly, at the least, is inflationary. And you asked about the broader questions for the economy. I think something we're, paying, we're not paying enough attention to right now is that the Fed has finally woken up, right? The Fed has finally begun to raise rates to attack inflation that is hurting so many Americans. But the second part of that equation from the monetary policy is the fiscal policy. 
And what are we doing as a country with over $30 trillion in debt? We're about now in this special session, this lame duck session of Congress, to pass another $1.6 trillion omnibus bill? I mean, as far as fiscal policy, all we're doing is continuing to drive inflation. Nobody's actually looking to say, when are we going to stop spending in this country? When are we going to start erasing debt and just saying, hey, go free? Yeah. You know, by the way, I didn't realize that Ron Klain's wife also works at the White House. She works at the State Department. I noticed it in the list of people who went to the state, to, uh, uh, state dinner last night. You had Ron Klain, assistant to the president and chief of staff to the president, and the Honorable Monica Medina. Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs at the Department of State. So Ron Klain, who, who is the chief of staff's wife, uh, is also working uh, at, in government in the State Department, and she's pretty much pushing the climate agenda. If you're questioning who's basically running the country and pushing this climate agenda, do, were you aware that his wife is also working there? You know, Maria, I wasn't, but I do feel like it's, it's representative of what we've seen in the State Department is getting far beyond its core competency and issues and now taking on political agendas like the Green Energy Plan. And it's certainly, I think, indicative of the positions that, that former Senator Kerry has there. And it's one more position yeah. that should be eliminated from the State Department. Yeah, Mark, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Mark Short joining us on all of Thanks. that. Have a Thanks, great Maria. weekend, Thanks, Mark. Sammy.